from a client and you get the web interface, yeah, this will work. Um, yeah, there we go, next slide. Um, now, once you identify that this works, the best way to stop it is to break any one of those three requirements we have on the router, okay? So you can stop the way stuff binds to interfaces, you can change firewall rules, you can change routing rules. Of course, just disabling the HTTP interface is probably the best thing to do anyway. Um, we can also do that. And then we can also reduce the impact of the attack, which is basic security precautions. So if you want to block the attack of the router, you can potentially um, tell the router services to bind to specific interfaces. Not all routers let you do this, and most people will not have the technical skill or the access to the router in order to do this. Um, so it's probably not the best option, but if you can do it, that's really the best way to do it. Um, you can also reconfigure the firewall rules, and these are, again, IP tables rules. It basically says, okay, my internal interface is ETH1. If someone on ETH1 tries to go to my public IP, drop it. Now the downside, to, you notice I put in actually slash 16 here. Um, the downside to putting in your specific public IP is that as soon as it changes, this rule breaks and you have to update it. So instead what you should do is do a who is lookup on your public IP for your ISP, see what the range is that they're handing out for DHCP, and just block that entire range. Because unless internal clients are trying to like hack your neighbors, which hopefully they shouldn't be doing, um, then this won't really affect any kind of internet connectivity that you have. You're just blocking all everything in the DHCP range that comes from your ISP, and then you don't have to update the rule. Um, yeah, don't use HTTP. Use HTTPS at least. Because um, if I try and rebind to HTTPS, you're going to get at least a cert error, and that's going to break the attack. Now, if you're administrating a router, it's best to use SSH. Even Telnet is better than the web interface. Most people can't do that, though, so best suggestion is just disable HTTP and enable HTTPS. Um, also disable UPnP while you're at it. Yeah, I know, to, I know you need it for your Xbox, you need it for your Skype and all that other crap. It's bad. Don't use it. Um, however, there are some problems. Don't just enable HTTPS and leave HTTP enabled because then I can still get to HTTP. Um, some routers actually don't let you disable HTTP. I've seen routers where there's a checkbox to enable HTTPS and you can't disable HTTP at all. So that's a problem. Um, some routers have HTTP services listening on alternate ports. This router, for example, listens on both port 80 and port 8080. Um, so if you're, if you're disabling this, make sure that all of those ports get disabled. Um, again, I'm bringing up HNAP. It's a home network administration protocol. It uses HTTP, not HTTPS, and in some routers, you cannot change that, and you cannot disable it. So I can still go after that if you have a weak password. Um, blocking attacks on the host. Let's say you don't have access to your router to do this. You, you just don't have sufficient access to, to make these changes, or you don't want to make the changes for whatever reason. You can go around to all of your internal hosts and basically put in the same rule. Say, don't allow this host to browse out to the router's public IP. Because again, I need an internal client in order to do this attack. So if the internal client can't access the router, then it breaks the attack. The downside to this is you have to do this on every single device that connects to your network and will ever connect to your network. That includes your iPads and your iTouches. Um, so that, that can certainly be a management nightmare if you have you know, more than two or three computers. Um, you can also configure dummy routes as well. Just say, hey, route everything that's going to my public IP to loop back, and of course, the connection will never succeed. Um, basic security precautions. For God's sakes, change your router's default password. No one does this. Uh, hopefully everyone in this room does this, but many people don't. Um, keep your firmware up to date. There are a lot of vulnerabilities in this routers. If you go online and you have a router and you're like, oh, there's no vulnerabilities in it, that means someone hasn't looked at it close enough yet. I I'm serious, these things are full of security holes. Um, so make sure you keep your firmware up to date because there's probably a vulnerability out there and if something gets published, you wanna make sure you have a patch for it, assuming your vendor actually patches it. Um, and don't trust untrusted content. And yes, everything on the internet is untrusted. You cannot trust stuff on the internet, especially something called attacker.com. Um, 
I would suggest disabling JavaScript or using no script. Um, but to be honest, that's completely impractical for the average user. I can't even, I get so annoyed browsing around the internet without JavaScript, and it's like, God damn it, I just enable it anyway. Because it's, it's so annoying. Everything uses JavaScript and stuff will just break epically if you don't have JavaScript enabled. So if you want to do that, knock yourself out. Um, but again, it's not really a good suggestion for the average user because they're not going to do it. So vendor and industry solutions. Um, so fix the same origin policy in the browsers, please. This, this attack has been around for almost 15 years. Um, so I know you notice that I don't have fixed DNS up here. I know a lot of people say, oh, we need to fix DNS, we need to fix DNS. This is not a DNS problem. And I think it's completely unfair to put the burden on the DNS. Okay, DNS was around long before the same origin policy was. DNS was never intended to be used for security. But whoever decided in their infinite wisdom to create the same origin policy said, ah, we're going to take DNS, which is a completely unauthenticated, unverifiable, unsecure protocol, and base a security model on it. So the problem is with the same origin policy in the browser. And that's what needs to be fixed. Um, it, for, if, you're, if you're a router vendor, implement the strong end system model in your router. End users will not know or care. It will not break anything for them, and it will keep them secure from this particular attack. Um, you can also build DNS rebinding mitigations into routers. The only router that I know of that does this is PFSense, um, because when they, they saw this posted up on the Black Hat site when the talk got accepted, and they contacted me, I said, yeah, just check your HTTP host headers. Make sure it, the HTTP host header has um, your host name in it or IP address and not someone else's. And so their, their actual um, their beta release for the 2.0 um, release of uh, PFSense has that check in it. So kudos to them. But no one else does this, to my knowledge. And that's a very, very simple way to stop any DNS rebinding attack in its tracks. So how am I doing on time, by the way? How many? 20? Wow. We've got, I hope you guys have a lot of questions. <laughs> I went through that a lot faster than I expected. Um, so DNS rebinding still poses a threat to the LAN, even with all the security protections out there and things that people have put in. Because ultimately, what they've put in doesn't work. There, it's, it's, it's like going to the doctor and saying, hey, I have diarrhea, and he gives you a cork. It's not a real fix. Um, we have tools available to exploit DNS rebinding. Okay, they work. Well, they work the second time, at least. Um, and really, you are ultimately responsible for the security of your network. You need to be aware of this stuff. I know a lot of people just, I talk, start talking about DNS rebinding, like, what the hell are you talking about? Seriously, Will, I'm going to smack you. Um, yeah, so make sure that you have this, you know about this stuff, and you take the proper precautions. Because, I mean, you really can't rely on vendors to fix patches in their routers. I mean, if you have a router that's like, you know, they, they dropped support for it a month ago, they're like, oh, well, you just have to buy a new router. Darn. Um, so make, make sure you're aware of this stuff. There is stuff that you can do to stop this. Make sure you do it. Um, so with that said, um, the rebind code is going to be posted up on rebind.googlecode.com. Um, I don't have the code checked in yet, but it'll be up there sometime today. Um, if you want to contact, again, do not contact my work. Contact me. And do we have questions? Yeah, yes. Interface to your, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my question was the JavaScript that you said you had on the client, that you put on the client, that feeds the router's web interface to your attacker machine? Yeah, it proxies requests from the attacker to the router and back. So it, it does that pull request back to rebind, mm -hmm. and then rebind tells it what to get. It gets from the router and then sends it back. OK. One question? Yeah. No more? Oh, there we go. Are there any other routers other than the action that work on FIOS? I know the other routers are actually fine. So FIOS is, the problem with FIOS is they use Mocha for their, for their cable connection. So you have to have a Mocha-enabled router. And those um, are not very prevalent. 
So most people just use the action tech. Supposedly, you can get them into bridging mode where they just pass through. Um, but everyone I've talked to who's tried that is like, it's a big pain in the ass and it never worked. Um, so pretty much everyone on Fios is using these routers, with very few exceptions. Okay, yeah, so if you, if you have, let's say you have the action tech, okay? The action tech router is your border gateway, and you put another router behind that, doesn't matter, I'm still attacking the public IP of the action tech. So I'm, I can still access the action tech router. Yeah. It'll, it'll protect your, it'll help protect your internal IP once I get on the router, but it won't stop me from getting to the router. Right. Yeah. Uh, what are the manufacturers you listed with Linksys? Um, we knew who the parent company of that is. So I'm kind of surprised that they haven't contacted you. Um, my work told me that they contacted them about something and then I never heard anything back from it. So I don't know if they just gave up or what happened with that. Um, again, th simply because my work was listed on, on, the, um, on, the, on the presentation, everyone contacted them instead of me. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't heard anything from them specifically. And again, but again, this isn't really a prop. I guess it's kind of a problem with the routers, but there's no real vulnerability in the routers. It's, it's, it really needs to be fixed in the browser, ultimately. Um, if the attacker knows the internal IP address of your router, can they mount the same attack despite the strong in-system model or filters it based on IP address? Um, they can't do it with this, because remember, when you try and do the, the, pub, the private IP, it'll <laughs> fail with, with this particular attack. If, if they know the internal IP address, you can try and do anti-DNS rebinding. The downside to that is you have to wait like an exorbitant amount of time, at least in Firefox. It's like two minutes or three minutes before you can do the rebind. So, so, so the realm of practicality starts decreasing there. Um, but yeah, you can also do cross-site request forgery attacks too, but like I said, they're, they're limited. Good. I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> can't you mount this attack without relying on the uh, same origin policy in the browser? Because you can still do cross-site posts. So you can still do one post request to log in and another post request to reconfigure the... the um, yeah, but not if they're using... Um, okay, so first of all, that won't work on this because it has anti-cross-site request forgery. There's a JavaScript token in there that you have to get. So you can't do that type of attack here. You also can't, like I mentioned, you can't do that against um, stuff that uses basic authentication. Um, that won't work anymore. Um, so yes, you can, you can use cross-site request forgery, um, certainly on a lot of routers to do that. Um, the other nice thing about this is because I can see the responses. This also open up, opens up multiple other vulnerability types that are not exploitable with cross-site request forgery, like information disclosure. So for example, DDWRT, by default, when you go to DDWRP's router's page, you know, splash page, it doesn't require you to log in. But it gives me a nice list of all your internal IP addresses and your MAC addresses and the exact build version of DDWT you're running. Um, and so I can't exploit that with cross-site request forgery, but I can with this. So I don't even have to log in in order to get a decent amount of information about your network. And granted, that doesn't give me necessarily uh, a definite exploit, but it's certainly not information that you want to be sharing with everyone on the internet who owns a domain name. Um, so, yeah, you, I'm not trying to disparage cross-site request forgery, and there's certainly a lot of really awesome things you can do with it, and it's a, definitely an easier attack. Um, but this has several advantages over it, which is kind of the point of uh, doing DNS rebinding. No more questions? Oh. Go back to what? Yeah. What's that? Oh, you just wanted to see the shell? Okay. <laughs> I know we got one question back there, getting a microphone. Do we have a quick one while he's doing that? All right. Hi, I'm curious about uh, you, <clears throat> with the same origin policy you mentioned, it's built, it's built on DNS, which is an untrust, un, untrusted platform. With the changes uh, or motion toward getting DNSSEC more widely uh, feasible, have you uh, would would that same uh, statement be true, or could you still do Absolutely. these sorts of attacks with be DNSSEC? Because I legitimately own attacker.com. 